So after freshening up, I am now heading out here in the afternoon and I'm going to make my way to the center of Malindi and also check out the beaches, see what the vibe is like. Hey. So you're probably wondering why Malindi? There are so many places on the Swahili coast in Kenya to choose from. There is Watamu just south of here. There's also Kilifi. And then you also have Lamu in the north, which is famous for its architecture and is UNESCO recognized. Now Lamu probably would have been my first choice, but the only way to get there from Mombasa is to get return flights. You can't take the road because it's not quite safe at the moment. There are stretches of road that get attacked by bandits and so it's not recommended. And so Malindi was the answer. It's a popular coastal town, has been for quite a few years. It is very populated with Italians. At the moment I'm quite far south of the centre so once I reach the end of the road that my villa is located on then I will try and find a guy, a tuk-tuk, who can take me to some places of historical interest such as the old town and an interesting monument which is also one of the reasons why I wanted to visit Melindi because of its historical value. I'll tell you all about it very shortly. Beautiful weather, late afternoon, it's around just after 4 p.m. Perfect time to go out to do some exploring, catch the sunset and grab some dinner later on. Believe it or not, this is the first time I have worn shorts in Kenya. Oh look, there's a tuk-tuk here. Oh, okay, someone else in it. I shall keep going. Uh, to Bas Vasco da Gama Pillar. Uh, how much? 100? Okay. minutes journey and I am at the right place it looks like. So I didn't quite expect that but it's fine. Uh, along with the 100 shillings that I just gave to my tuk-tuk driver I then just paid 500 Kenyan shillings to enter the Melindi Museum which gets you access to the famous pillar that we're about to see. Apologies if there's wind sound, my GoPro is not the best for that. So we're just gonna have to put up with it for this one, I'm afraid. <laughs> Here we go, first views of the Indian Ocean in Malindi. Obviously I've seen it in Mombasa, although I didn't cover it in any videos much. So this is supposed to be the museum. Ah, I see a pillar over here. So as we walk up to it, the Vasco da Gama pillar, what does it represent? Well, Vasco da Gama's Portuguese fleet were the first to reach East Africa. And it was at this point where the Portuguese first anchored in 1498. So the coral column is actually topped by a cross which is made from Lisbon stone and from here there are great views of the north stretching all the way down to 
the south as well. Mombasa in that direction. What it represents is essentially the birth of exploration for Europeans in the region. On the same trip, the Portuguese found India. They set up bases in Goa. Vasco da Gama was born in Portugal in 1460. Having proven to be a qualified navigator, he was chosen by King Manuel I to lead the expedition to outflank the Muslim traders in the Indian Ocean and discover the sea route to Indian, to India, I should say, by sailing around Africa through the Cape of Good Hope. That's beyond South Africa. On the 7th of April, 1498, the expedition reached Mombasa and on the 13th anchored at Malindi, where he established the amicable relations with the Sheikh of Melindi. On the 10th of July, 1499, Gamma arrived back to Portugal, though with 55 left out of the original 170 crew. He received a hero's welcome for being the first man to sail directly from Europe to India, a mission which many saw as impossible. The whole Swahili coast has been so influential in the history of East Africa, the Omanis, the Portuguese, the Arabs, and then eventually the British when it came to building the railway line from Mombasa to Kampala in Uganda. The influences that the coast has had on the Swahili people, culture and traditions, as I mentioned in my Mombasa vlogs, is astounding in terms of cuisine, language, Arabic words form a lot of Swahili. There is just so much uh, history here. So Melindi is a little bit more than just a resort town on the Indian Ocean. It has places like this. I'm going to check out the Old Town now and see what that has to offer. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the Portuguese when they first arrived here and they stumbled across this exotic and tropical land. Over there is a Melindi tourist market. <laughs> but I am definitely going to avoid that because I feel like I'm going to get way too much attention and bother in there. I mean, just walking along the road here. I haven't been recording it, but most people come past on a motorbike, beep at me going, hey, hey, you want to ride? You want to ride? <laughs> Every tuk-tuk stops to ask me. And then there's people selling coconuts. And I mean, it's quite eventful as someone who's clearly uh, not from here. They see you as a chance to make money and, and that's okay. You know, people live off that here. So I believe we're heading into the old town now. This is the beginning of it anyway. I'm not sure, as I said, how impressive it is. So this seems to be the main market area of Melindi. You can see a lot of the men are wearing the hats of the region. It's quite a bustling vibe here. <laughs> and I'm getting a lot of attention. I'm gonna retrace my steps as I don't think I'm necessarily heading where I wanna be heading. So that is the largest mosque in Melindi, I believe. I have to say the old town, I haven't really found much. But maybe I needed a guide. I just quickly came to check it out for myself. This is the outside of the Juma Mosque here. And I'm working my way back to the beach. I mean, that's what you come <laughs> to these towns for. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. So away from the old town and I am now at Coco Beach. My plan is to now head down here and walk along it 
as the sun sets. However, <laughs> the sun is setting this way as we are, of course, on the east coast of Africa, not the west. Something I previously uh, <laughs> didn't put my mind to. Shoes off, feet on the sand, the Indian Ocean, unfortunately now overcast as opposed to the blue skies when I arrived. Bit of a birthday party of some kind at one of the resorts there. I like seeing some of the boats just hanging out on the edge of the coastline. Jambo, Jambo. <laughs> I'm good, thank you, I'm good. Sure. My name is Salo for promotion because I'm here morning up till now. I didn't sell you anything for, for promotion necklace. So that guy there trying to sell me some necklaces made of shells. He's not the only one, there's lots of them on sale around here. Which brings me to the point that there is a place called Melindi Marine National Park where you can do boat excursions. However, a lot of the reefs have suffered environmental damage and that's due to people collecting the shells to then sell them on the beaches to tourists. So if you can help it, try not to promote that sort of thing, but make your own decision. Still going. <laughs> I've been walking down here for around half an hour or more. And you'll notice that there's a lot of empty resorts this one here in front of me looks even completely closed and from what i've heard melindy has gone through some tough times um it used to be really thriving and covid has only added to the fact that they were already struggling a little bit i believe and I think quite a lot of hotels and resorts have actually had to close. Now, I have seen a few. I haven't put them on camera as I've gone by in my tuk-tuk journeys and things like that through the back streets. This one is definitely closed. So I can kind of relate to why people are quite pushy here. The Taos anyway, or the coconut guys or the motorbike drivers who whistle at you every time you walk past to get your attention. So it kind of feeds through to everybody here who relies on tourism when the resorts are closed. Here is one of the most well-known restaurants in Malindi. It's called Osteria. I believe it also has rooms. Now, again, from my research, very good Italian food. And if you come to Melindi, you might find the best Italian food in all of Kenya. So I think I've got to pay it a visit. So I'm now sat down here in the restaurant and I have a beautiful view of the sea with the breeze blowing gently the palm trees in front of me swaying. It's really beautiful and peaceful. And to top it off, I've ordered a pizza, a capricciosa, with my favorite pizza topping, artichokes. So we'll see how that goes. Until then, just going to sit and enjoy the peace and quiet. So just finished the pizza here at Osteria on the beach and I am going to head back to my accommodation. Tomorrow I'm waking up early as I'm heading to some very interesting ruins nearby. So 
I will see you in the morning. The pizza, by the way, was pretty good, I would say. It wasn't obviously as good as Italian standards, but it was very good as other countries go. Good morning and welcome back. Today I'm finishing off the Melindi video by heading out of Melindi. I'm going south towards Watamu as there is a notable place of interest called the Geda Ruins, which I will talk about more once I get there. But first I need to take a tuk-tuk, which is around 25 minutes south along the same road I came in a Matatu from Mombasa. Morning. Thank you. So my tuk-tuk driver has now dropped me off here at the Gede ruins, which are a fantastic example of a Swahili coastal town, sort of lost in the jungle. And I'm paying my tuk-tuk driver 1,200 Kenyan shillings to wait for me for a couple of hours while I explore. I am going to grab a guide for 500 shillings, and it is also 500 shillings to enter. So this one was started by Swahili, then later on they were joined by Arabs, Oromorgala mm. and Indians. It was started in 12th century, around 900 years back, reached its climax in 15th century, mm -hmm. then in early 17th century, that's the time they came and yeah. abandoned the city. Mm -hmm. So its population, they give it a range from 2,500 to 3,000 people, and they were believed to be Muslims. Uh -huh. due to the existence of eight mosques within the site. So the bigger part of Gedi is still lying inside the bushes. I have lots of baobabs. For me, whenever I see a baobab tree, yeah. uh, it's like if a Kenyan was to see snow. For me, I get really excited because oh. it's really special to special. see these trees. Yeah. <laughs> They're incredible with their thick trunks. Yeah. So it's one of the giant trees we have actually. Baobabs. That's right. It can live up to 3,000 years, wow. its lifespan. Then again, you'll hear some people, they call it an upside down tree. So this here was the city center. Am I right in saying that it was thriving during around the 15th century? 15th century, yeah. 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 So it was much, uh, much uh, thriving in 15th century. Because you'll find like a much of these uh, houses, much of the tombs, were dating 15th century after they did the carbon dating. That's why we say for it, it reached its peak in 15th century, much of it. So since 15th century up to date, the walls are still standing, still strong. Yeah. Then this one is a bohol, one of the dry wells, where they used to get water. It's deep. Yeah, within this well now. So within, within the entire city, there are around 28 wells. All of them dried up completely. So this here is the great mosque with its structure and walls still standing. Do you know it was built by the Swahili people that lived here or was it built by like Arabs who came here? These ones were built by the Swahili. Ah. Yeah. But you'll find like with time, much of this architect were from the Arabs. <laughs> I uh, swallow. <laughs> yeah, but the purpose is that it, it echoes and it still does 500 years later today. Yeah. yeah. From the mosque we just came from, you can see here there are still areas that haven't been excavated. In fact, 33 acres as opposed to the 12 which have been.
here you can see house of venetian bead and over here house of chinese cash items found from the ming dynasty and also the influence of europe india the arabs it shows what a cosmopolitan society the swahili were and the trade that went through the east coast of africa here things coming from all over the world spanish porcelain or indian spices it doesn't matter um, and some very elaborate items you know jewelry beads What's this? This is a baobab fruit. Oh, it is the baobab yeah, fruit. The shell of it. Wow, it's enormous. Yeah. So they are normally whitish in color inside. Now. But this oh, one. Okay. Is more... Yeah. So if, if you look at it, the coloration of it outside it looks like a rat color. So this one is very poisonous. But into some point, you'll find like some people use it like an ornamental tree. You'll find some people inside either offices or within the garden with a tree. So because of the flowers, it booms very nice flowers, which mm. are very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so this plant here is called the desert rose and it's very poisonous. In fact, if you were just to rub it on your hands and perhaps eat or put it in a cut or a wound, then you would be dead within probably a few minutes. It kind of became lost in the jungle. Lost in, yeah, lost in the jungle. And as you said, the Machu Picchu of Kenya, yes. the other places where there were Swahili so, ruins, it the, 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 was Mombasa, Malindi, Malindi Lamu, Lamu. And so they built the city around it and it kind of got it, hidden within the, the buildings yes. that so, continued to develop. To develop. So much of it has been rebuilt on the other cities. One other place near Malindi that I suggest from what people have recommended to me visiting, although I haven't had time to go, is a place called Hell's Kitchen. And it's around two and a half hours from Melindi inland. And it is this very unique area of spiky sandstone, red rock, and somewhere that is sort of a natural phenomenon it gets very hot during the day so it's recommended to visit in the early morning or late afternoon and you can take a matatu to get there and then you can pay for your entrance and for a guide like here and as i said if i had more time i would go i'm going to end this video of melindi and the kenyan coast here this is my last full vlog from the country the next one is going to be my journey traveling from Mombasa across to Tanzania so stay tuned for that and if you want to join my group trip in Morocco then the link is in the video description and I will see you on the next one